How is it going guys? Welcome back. Did you know that there is a place where you can farm not just one but five bosses in a row? In order to have the spawns we're gonna need a quest called the Path to Revelations. By the way this is the last quest of a quest chain. If you haven't done any of them get ready for five more quests. Plus if you have completed the Revelations quest the only way to get the bosses at Varajar Fence is to bring someone else who still has it. Normally this place is used for non-point farming, but with the help of spirits and pain inverter we can farm a dervish, a warrior, a monk, a necro and a mesmer boss too. They spawn one after each other. So actually there is a sixth boss too, a ranger, but to keep the quest repeatable we don't kill that one. So this is how to do it, start from either Sifala or from Olafstad and in both cases you will have to kill several monsters to reach the boss spot. Good heroes are recommended of course and some speed boost too. Uh, this part is padded up to save time and don't bore you to death. Running through Drakkar Lake is maybe faster because there is a kind of clear path leading to Varajar Fels. Few more groups in this area and then we reach the portal between Fels and Norher domains. Alright guys, we are here, this is our starting point. Upon entering the area you can pick up the Norns bounty if you want or simply run straight to the spot. If you don't stop and have speed boost you can skip the first Minotaur group and distract them with spirits. I tend to flag heroes at this part otherwise they start attacking or using skills and follow me much slower. A simple SOS is enough usually uh, to slow down the minos. Ok moving on, if you get a good spawn at the next group the Wendigos are Ganti you get here. This makes our run faster. Now get ready for smoke phantom pop ups all the way till the boss spot. And in hard mode their air magic spells hurt badly, so an ST hero and skills like power spike or cry of frustration can speed up the fight against them. But if you are confident you can pop up several phantoms at the same time, just make sure that your group is strong enough. And there is one very close to our final destination, once that is dead too, you can flag heroes somewhere far from this place, this way they can't leech drops, usually this clearing phrase takes like a minute or a minute and a half. So the fun begins. Our first victim is a dervish boss, Facet of Spirit. You should place your spirits where I do, use Armor of Unfeeling and put Pain Inverter on the boss. Guys, very important, Armor of Unfeeling is like the best skill for an SOS, always use it because this makes your spirit strong and tanky. I don't even hex with Painful Bond since Pain Inverter do great service for us and kill the boss very quickly. When it's done for left, um, always replace low HP spirits in the breaks. Warrior is the next one, the facet of destruction. He has gladiator's defense so it will make some time to kill him because of the blocks, but spirits are strong, don't you worry guys. Facet of existence among us and honestly this is why we need the spirit of disenchantment. Don't use painful bond at first but let him use a few skills. If we use it too early he will most likely remove uh, the hex immediately with contemplation of purity. But after a few spirit bonds hex him and let spirits do their job. Facet of Death comes next, this is a necro boss with Grand's Balance. Try to stay behind spirits or he will find you with his hexes. This is true for all of these bosses obviously, let your spirits take damage. And the elite will always steal some HP from you, this is something we can change. Also make sure you have like 30 plus energy when the necro boss dies, because we got to be very fast against the mesmer boss. If you can't hex him with Pain Inverter and Painful Bond immediately he won't die. The spiritual pain and either fist makes the boss stronger than the previous ones, but if you place spirits close to each other, then Pain Inverter will save the day. After that simply die if your heroes have no res, you will get resurrected close to the portal or zone with your other account or you can walk back then rezone and you can farm them again. But if you kill the last boss, the ranger too, 
The quest will be completed, meaning you need to abandon and retake it once more, losing precious time. Ok, let's see how this farm competes against other boss farms. So after 200 runs I got 8 elite tomes, meaning on average I get 1 elite tome for every 25 boss kills. Honestly this is surprisingly good and easily took this farm to the second place behind Gisol Darkstone's 9 elites. Also I was able to get at least one of each kind except the dervish tome, maybe he being the first on the list lowers his drop rate or something like that. Furthermore no greens from these bosses, but I would have loved to get those too. But at least they drop tons of scrolls, a few unit golds, they also drop elemental swords and items similar to the raptor farm, so daggers, great conches and so on. And I think this is a really fun way to farm elite tomes, gives greater satisfaction than other boss farms, less monotonous probably, you can never know what you will get, a warrior elite, a monk elite or something else. So this was the facet boss elite tome farm, if you still have questions feel free to ask and as always thanks for watching and see you in the next video.